Yes, I'm Judy Pa. I'm an assistant professor here in neurology at UC San Francisco. Um, so I've always been interested in, in the clinical brain and clinical processes, um, but I felt that I needed to understand the healthy brain before I could start to characterize uh, a diseased brain. After I finished my PhD in psychology with um, an emphasis on, in cognitive neuroscience, where I learned functional imaging, I decided to take that understanding of the healthy brain and um, neuroimaging and apply it to a clinical population. So then I came up here to UCSF to complete a postdoctoral fellowship in 2007, in which I learned a lot about neurodegenerative diseases, um, the, the proteins and the aberrations that are involved in these diseases, and specifically was very drawn to Alzheimer's disease, largely because it being the most common form of dementia and the most common cause of cognitive impairment, I, I saw such a need for research in that area. And uh, given my background in neuroimaging, I thought that that would be a good um, avenue of research because there wasn't much being done on it at the time. Um, so I'm incredibly grateful to the Alzheimer's Association for funding this new project that I'm beginning, which is really wanting to understand um, how does the relationship of selective vulnerability in certain brain areas to Alzheimer's disease, such as the hippocampus, relate to a broader functional network? So we know that the brain doesn't function <clears throat> in isolation, but rather there's a, an interaction of many different brain areas that work together to achieve a cognitive process. Um, specifically within Alzheimer's disease, we tend to think about memory function as being the primary factor. Um, but I believe that there's this tight interaction and link between attention and memory. So in my research, I try to really understand or elucidate this relationship and how it becomes um, apparent in people at risk for Alzheimer's disease. And so in um, this new project that I'm really excited about, I'm actually going to try to do multimodal imaging in which I look at the um, relationship between functional brain networks and amyloid deposition. So in some of my early preliminary work, there's a suggestion that um, amyloid deposition in more frontal areas may be perhaps modulating the connectivity or the communication between frontal regions and um, more memory regions like the hippocampus. And so understanding the contribution of pathology on the communication of larger networks is really important for understanding one, how does the brain change in a disease process like Alzheimer's disease? And two, if we were able to clear out some of this pathology that's causing this disruption, can we bring the, back, the brain back to a normal state? I would be really, what I am really excited about is um, first this invention of PET imaging and actually being able to tag in vivo um, Alzheimer's pathology. But now there's a lot of work being done in some really early preliminary data um, towards being able to also not only look at the amyloid or the plaques, but also be able to tag the, the tau or the tangles in the brain. Um, from my perspective, it's really going to be understanding the interaction between these two proteins and how they exist within the living brain for being able to get closer and closer towards understanding how we can um, clear them from the brain prevent them from the brain, and then ultimately clear, cure, prevent, cure or prevent Alzheimer's disease. Uh, there's been a lot of exciting work in the past that um, has made us believe we're closer and closer to a cure, and then there's, there's been some road bumps, speed bumps in the way. And so, um, you know, I hope with continued effort and continued funding and continued public awareness to be able to get our research participants that we need who may be in early or asymptomatic stages into our projects um, that may perhaps within 10 years, I'd like to say, we might be getting to that point. But at, currently, there's a lot of early prevent, primary prevention trials that are ongoing. And I think it'll be at least five years before we'll know much um, the, before we'll really know the results of those trials. Um, another area of, of research that I think is really exciting is exercise. And um, you know, there's been a lot of association studies that have shown this to be a potential modifier of getting um, 
Alzheimer's disease, and then now a few actually controlled randomized trials in which we can uh, look at the treatment of exercise versus uh, no activity. <clears throat> and, you know, we'll still have to see how helpful that is, but I think um, that's a really interesting and exciting area of research for interventions.